Welcome to Nice and Blunt. The Combine is officially over and free agency is right around the corner. So before you know it, all of your favorite NFL teams are going to look much different than last season, most likely. And now is the best time than ever to talk about some of those rookies who are coming into the NFL this season. So this video is going to be all about wide receivers. I'm going to give you my top 10 rankings for the wide receiver rookie draft class of 2022. Let's go. Okay, so before I get into this list, I just want to preface the fact that this list is not set in stone. It's definitely going to need to be updated following the draft and the location that these players go to, which teams that draft them is very important, especially in terms of early success. The quarterback that they get to play with can definitely help or hinder their success in their rookie year. I don't know if Jamar Chase would have been as elite as he was if he didn't play with Joe Burrow last season. It's not that he would have been terrible, but that definitely helped him. So that's what I'm talking about. Don't take this video as, you know, the final, final rankings. Definitely stay tuned for an update after the draft. But let's get into it because at the top, there are two wide receivers out of Ohio State that I think are can't miss prospects. I absolutely love Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. And last season, they had a very reliable workload. Both saw 103 targets. Garrett Wilson caught 70 of them for 1,058 yards and 12 touchdowns. He also had four rush attempts for 76 yards and a touchdown. But Chris Olave turned his 103 targets into 65 receptions, 936 yards, and 13 touchdowns. So both of them played 11 games and had 13 total touchdowns last season. Very efficient, very productive for Ohio State. At the Combine, their stats, again, almost mirrored each other identically. They both come in at 6 feet tall, I, exactly. Uh, Garrett Wilson weighs 183. Chris Olave, 187, and the 40-yard time for Garrett Wilson was 438. For Chris Olave, it was 439, so basically identical. And both of their hands are on the larger side in terms of the measurements. Garrett Wilson at 9 and 7 8 inches, and Chris Olave, 9 and a half inches for his hands. So that definitely helps catch the ball. There aren't that many stats that like immediately translate into being a good receiver like for instance it's great that you can run a, a very fast 40 time but if you can't catch the ball then it doesn't matter if you have the highest vertical jump or for instance the longest broad jump that means you have the biggest catch radius of all but it doesn't mean anything if you don't catch the ball so the stat that i do kind of care about a little bit when it comes to projecting future success is hand size it helps to have bigger hands and then smaller hands because the ball does get bigger from college to the NFL. Anyways, I don't want to inundate you with too many stats, but I do think um, 40 yard time, the height and weight and hand size are important measurements when it comes to players uh, coming out of the combine. So let's uh, just get back to these wide receivers from Ohio State. I think they both remind me of the same player, if I'm going to be honest with you, especially because they're like the same height and weight. I see Calvin Ridley a lot when I watch these two players, especially when it comes to route running, footwork, and just overall IQ on the field. They're both great players. And Calvin Ridley is also in the news today. It looks like he's going to be suspended for 2022. I didn't plan to bring this up, but, uh, you know, it's relevant and uh, it happens to coincide with the NFL comp for both of these guys. So let's take a quick look at some of their tape and maybe you'll see some Calvin Ridley type of potential as well. So some great footwork on this double move. Let's take a look at the replay. So it gets some real good separation and here is Chris Olave in red, Garrett Wilson's in yellow. And look at how much attention Garrett Wilson draws away from Chris Olave. He's completely wide open to make this catch. He stays in bounds, impressive move, gets the blocks, and motors into the end zone. Here he is lined up. Chris Olave makes this play happen on third and nine. He makes the catch, stays in bounds yet again, avoids that ankle tackle, changes direction, and 
glides into the end zone. He makes it look easy. I mean, this should not be as effortless, but uh, that's a narrowly missed tackle. Kind of lucky a little bit, but still keeps his balance, and then plants the foot, changes direction, and easily gets into the end zone. But those were just a couple of the highlights from last year's tape. If you want to see the full highlight reel, I'll have the link for each of these players down below in the description. But let's keep it moving, because number three is also a can't-miss prospect. His name is Drake London, the junior from USC, right in my backyard. And I don't want to sound biased, but uh, I kind of feel like I need to put him at number one. Last year, Drake London was absolutely dominant. He only played in eight games. He got injured late October. He fractured his ankle and had to be carted off the field. That is why he did not attend the Combine this weekend. But in those eight games, he saw 124 targets. That's an average of 15 and a half targets per game. He caught 88 of them, so that's 11 receptions per game. And he went over 1,080 yards receiving and he averaged 135 receiving yards per game. Drake London is no joke. He also caught seven touchdowns in those eight games. So very impressive stats from Drake London. And if it wasn't for the injury, he would have dominated all of the statistics throughout and across the board. These are unofficial times and unofficial measurements, but it looks like he comes in at six foot five, 210 pounds, and can run a 44840. That is a nightmare to guard, and you can see why he was so dominant in the NFL. If I had to compare him to a current day pro, he looks a lot like Mike Evans to me, and he's going to be dynamic from day one. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be good to go and ready to produce right away. So he may have a, a slightly slower start than uh, the two Ohio State wide receivers. Maybe that first month of the season, he gets a little bit more um, you know, eased into the mix. We'll see what the recovery timeline looks like for him. But um, once he's ready, he's going to be great. And um, I think you can see Mike Evans in the tape as well here. However, I'm going to be honest with you. There's some plays on this highlight reel that concern me in terms of injury risk. And it's not the ankle. It's his back. He, he's he falls on his back a little bit too much for me to feel comfortable. And I kind of feel reminiscent of watching Mike Williams go down on his back and uh, come up in pain. So that's something I think he needs to watch out for. And I hope it's not something that uh, creeps up throughout his career. But, you know, just think about it. He's already six foot five. He's going up for a catch. He's great at those 50 50 balls. He knows how to high point it. Um, if you fall and land directly on your spine with nothing else to break the fall over and over again, it's just going to you know, take its toll on your health. And that is why I'm a little bit concerned with Drake London and why I have him at number three. I think the injury concern is um, noteworthy, but the talent is definitely there. Um, Drake London is not going to have a problem if he's healthy. At number four, though, is Traylon Burks, the junior out of Arkansas. And in 12 games in the SEC, he had 92 targets and 14 rush attempts. So a lot of volume for him. He caught 66 passes for 1,104 yards, 11 receiving touchdowns. And he turned those 14 rush attempts into 112 yards and another touchdown. When you watch the film on him, he is a beast. He comes in at six foot three, 225 pounds. And at the combine, he ran a 4.5540. Now, some of the things that I was reading about him made me feel like that was a little bit disappointing. I thought he would be a little bit faster. People compared him to DK Metcalf with 4.3 uh, type of speed. Hold on, let me just fix this light. Um, however, at 4.55, he compares a lot more like AJ Brown. However, he's even taller and he has more lower body strength. So, you can also compare him to Debo Samuel a little bit. I think no matter what, we can all agree he's a nightmare to tackle. Let's just take a look at this play. Uh, a little bubble screen for him, stiff arms the defender, and breaks it to the house. This is basically a 90-yard reception all on his own. And if he gets open like this, and it's going to be impossible for other players to tackle him, um, I think... Traylon Burks is going to be a problem in the NFL, and you can buy into the hype. He's definitely uh, going to be a great wide receiver. He comes in at number four 
for me. At number five, though, I have Jahan Dotson, the senior out of Penn State. And in 12 games in the Big Ten, he had a monster target workload. He had 146 targets last year, the most of any player on this list in this video. He caught 91 receptions for 1,182 yards, 12 touchdowns. He also had six rush attempts for 18 yards and another score. So very, very electric uh, was Jahan Dotson. And he's a pretty good route runner. I feel like speed is his best attribute. He comes in at 5'11", only 178. But um, he runs a 4-4-3, at least at the combine. But this, the, the tape makes him look a little faster than this. I really like his route running. And if I had to compare him to a, a current day pro, I see a lot of Darnell Mooney in his game. And if you know me, I am quite a big fan of Darnell Mooney. I'm very high on Darnell Mooney specifically next season with Justin Fields, assuming Allen Robinson is no longer in the mix. But I'll talk about that in its own video. Let's stick with Jahan Dotson. I really feel confident that he is going to be ready. So don't forget about Jahan Dotson. However, a player who really boosted his draft stock in the combine is Sky Moore, the third year sophomore, so basically a junior, out of Western Michigan. And he was very dominant in his conference, uh, the MAC. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not fully sure what that stands for. I'll have it written here, but um, off the top of my head, I can't say what conference that actually is anyways he had 135 targets last season so very very big workload he cut 95 receptions so actually more receptions than Jahan Dotson but uh, he turned that into 1292 yards 10 touchdowns also an extra 10 yards rushing on one carry so he is very electric and he absolutely dominated this workout he Comes in at 5'10", 195 pounds. So, honestly, I kind of want to rank him over Jahan Dotson. I mean, but when you think about it, a, uh, an inch shorter, but 17 pounds heavier. He's definitely built and an even faster 40 time of 4'4'1". So, there's nothing to complain about with Sky Moore. And when you look at his hand measurement, he has the biggest hands of anyone at the combine in terms of the, the wide receivers, at least with 10 and a quarter inch hands. I really am excited about Sky Moore. I think uh, the hype on him uh, going in the second round is legit. I think he really boosted that draft capital. And when you look at the tape, he reminds me a lot of Stefan Diggs. He's just a little bit shorter, and I think he's going to have a lot of success in the NFL. However, my only concern with Sky Moore is that it may take a little bit longer than some of those other players I mentioned earlier to, you know, fully get up to speed in the NFL. It's not like the competition in the, I looked it up, I, I had to know, the Mid-American Conference is, you know, as comparable to the NFL. So, it may be a little bit slow those first couple of months for Sky Moore, but I do think, depending on the team, he could be a, a very big contributor early on in his rookie season. Right after him is another player who uh, did not play in uh, the best conference, but uh, Christian Watson, the senior from North Dakota State, needs your attention. Last season wasn't uh, the, the most dominant when it comes to these stats. He had 80 targets, 43 receptions, and 801 yards for seven touchdowns last season. But he absolutely wrecked his workout. He comes in at 6'4", 208 pounds, runs a 4'3'6", official 40 at the combine, and his hands are 10 and 1 8 inches. He's definitely dominant in that respect. And he also had a 38 and a half inch vertical leap, 136 broad jump. This guy absolutely wrecked the workout and he's one of the best athletes in this year's class. He reminds me a lot of Mike Williams and I think he boosted his draft capital as well. He'll probably go in uh, the early third mid round probably but um i think christian watson needs your attention you cannot forget about him and i prefer him just a little bit more than calvin austin the third who also wrecked his workout at the combine as well calvin austin played in memphis last last year and he is a senior but in 12 games he had 127 targets 74 receptions 1149 yards 
eight touchdowns, also had one rush attempt, which he turned into a 69-yard touchdown. So very explosive is Calvin Austin, and this play specifically is one of my favorites on his highlight reel. It's just a punt return, but look at the guts for him to pick this up and take it to the house. Yeah, he slips past all of the defenders and uh, makes it look easy. He is a hell of an athlete, and if it wasn't for his height, I think you wouldn't have anything to complain about. He comes in at five foot eight, 170 pounds, so that's definitely not an advantage in the NFL. However, he runs a 4-3-240. His hands are nine and a quarter inches, and his vertical is 39 inches. He just wrecked that one even more than Christian Watson, and the broad jump, 135 inches. So 11 feet, three inches on the broad jump, very, very impressive. And his speed really jumps off the page. I think his pro comp is Tyreek Hill. A little bit shorter, a little bit less built. However, I think that is the potential, especially on special teams. He could be a monster. Calvin Austin uh, cannot be forgotten. And I have him at number eight. That kind of feels a little bit disrespectful, a little bit too low. But um, Sky Moore and Christian Watson really impressed me at the Combine as well. And I think height does play a factor. That's why I have them just a couple spots higher. But um, don't be surprised if he starts out great from day one. He, uh, he looks like the real deal as well. But two players to round out the top 10 are probably too low on my list. However, both of them are coming off significant injuries. And that's really the only reason why you can't be excited about them early on this year. The players I'm talking about both play for Alabama. Their names are Jamison Williams and John Mechie, both juniors in the SEC. And Jamison Williams tore his ACL in January in the national championship game. So he has the least amount of time to recover than anyone. However, John Mechie tore his ACL just a few weeks before that. So Let's just take a look at their stats because they had very dominant seasons and wide receivers from Alabama usually have a ton of success in the NFL uh, early on in their careers. So in his junior season, Jamison Williams played in 15 games and saw 118 targets, caught 79 of them for 15 touchdowns, had three rush attempts for another 23 yards. So very efficient, very explosive, over 104 total yards per game. And the stat that's most impressive about Jamison Williams is the yards per reception. He finished with 19.9 yards per catch last season, the most of any wide receiver on this list, seventh most in all of college football last year. However, no other player had a workload comparable to Jamison Williams. He got 79 receptions, and you have to go all the way down to basically wide receiver 50 in that stat in order to find a player with more receptions than Jamison Williams. So you can really buy in to this type of production. It's not like it was a fluke. And when you watch the film, this guy is a nightmare to cover. He's so fast and so elusive. If he has just one step on you, he can take it to the house untouched. So Jamison Williams is really fucking fast, and he's also pretty tall too. He's six foot two. Uh, it's unofficial, but apparently he weighs 189 and runs a 425 40. Uh, based on the combine, he may be a little bit uh, slimmer than that in actuality, and he may be a tiny bit slower on the clock. But if you want to nitpick other than the injury in terms of why you might be uh, a little bit skeptical about Jamison Williams, keep in mind he originally went to Ohio State, and if he didn't transfer to Alabama last season, then he would have been stuck behind Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, and we may not be talking about him as highly so the only question is why wasn't he able to you know establish himself over those two players maybe we should trust them a little bit more than him but it's not like he transferred to a bad school it's not like alabama has a bad football program and bad coaching if anything he he almost made an upgrade but ohio state is definitely legit in their own right so don't read too much into that but it is you know a legit question um there is an answer to it it might just be there was a better opportunity in Alabama. It could be as simple as that. But um, 
I, I, I'm very confident in uh, Jamison Williams, and I'm also confident in his teammate, John Mechie. John Mechie the third is going to have a few more weeks to recover from his ACL, but it's basically the same situation as Jamison Williams. Don't expect too much uh, right out of the gate from either of these players. And uh, their draft capital is probably going to take a hit, but their talent is definitely there. And John Mechie was actually the wide receiver one for Alabama in terms of targets. He was a little less efficient, but he saw 133 targets in 13 games, caught 96 of them for 1,142 yards, eight touchdowns. So a little bit fewer uh, touchdowns, but definitely more targets and uh when you watch him play he definitely looks like a pro i like the route running a lot i like the composure i like the footwork and if i had to compare him to a player in today's league he actually measures quite similarly to robert woods also six feet tall comes in at an unofficial 195 pounds so he's pretty built and uh if this is accurate then he's actually a little bit faster than robert woods an unofficial 436 40 but based on the fact that they both just suffered an ACL I imagine both of these players run a slightly slower time than that in actuality once they're going to be back on the field so maybe don't read into those stats too much but um, I do love the tape on John Mechie I think he's a little bit more of a sure bet in the NFL I think the floor is a little bit higher with John Mechie however the ceiling is highest with Jamison Williams so I don't think you can uh, really nitpick between the two. They're basically uh, wide receiver 9A and 9B, but I do have Jamison Williams at 9, just a tick over John Mechie. But some honorable mentions for players who just barely missed the list. Wandale Robinson comes in at number 11 out of Kentucky. One hell of a season for him in his junior year. He's someone you can't forget about either, just barely misses this list. Behind him, I like Jalen Tolbert a lot out of Southern Alabama. I also love Khalil Shakir out of Boise State. And Alec Pierce had one hell of a combine. I don't think you can dismiss him entirely, although he's definitely a little bit lower on the list. So let's run through this top 10 list one last time just to get these rankings uh, finished with. At number one, I love Garrett Wilson the most, but I really trust Chris Olave at number two right behind him. And Drake London at number three could deserve the, the number one overall spot, but I'm a little bit more concerned in terms of the injury risk for him, but elite talent all, all the way across the board. Same goes for Traylon Burks at number four, followed by Jahan Dotson at number five. And at number six, I got Sky Moore, followed by Christian Watson, Calvin Austin the third, Jamison Williams, and John Mechie to round out my top 10 rookie wide receivers before this year's draft. This list will change after the draft at least a little bit so don't set it in stone. And if you don't want to miss out on the video, make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And uh, give me a comment down below if you have any questions about some of these players or if you have any type of content you'd uh, like to see this offseason or if you see things differently and think there's a player that I failed to mention. But uh, I hope you have a great day. My name is Adam Riancho, and thank you for watching Nice and Blunt.